Hello. So, before we move on to the magic teacher, there's one more thing we need to do to our shop merchant person thing. Uh, now that we can have different versions of this NPC that can sell us different items, we should have a way of differentiating between them so that it's just not a bunch of mannequins. So, what I've done is I've gotten a few characters from Mixamo. So, this probably froze on me. So, I've got this girl, this girl, this guy, and a few others. And then I got an animation for them each. I'm going to be just using the same animation, but you do have to download different um, copies of it for each skeleton. So, you'll download the character. Pull it back up. You'll download the character, and then you'll go over to the animation and download the animation, and then move on to the next character, download the character, then the animation, etc. So, I'm going to show you how we can have one NPC using different skeletons and animations. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to open up the shopkeeper. Ooh, that's not true at all. The first thing we need to do is we need to go into our characters folder. And right click create a new folder and this is going to called, be called NPC. Now let's see, I'm going to create a bunch of new folders. This is going to have my GM female from a general merchant female. My GM male. Let's see, I've got a for, oh, foraging merchant. I still have not learned to spell. I've got the magic teacher and then an equipment vendor. So I'm going to import just a couple of these to show you and then I'll do a side video of importing the rest of them. This is just so you can get the, re the, the basics of it. So you'll find wherever you downloaded your meshes to So you'll import the mesh first, and then the animation, which hers was the 13, where is it? Oh. And you make sure it's applied to the right skeleton, it should automatically if you're in the folder. I've noticed if you try to import an animation into a folder that has a skeletal mesh, it'll automatically apply. So that, that looks right. Now my foraging merchant, I'm going to import the mesh first so that it can build the skeleton. and then import her animation which you'll see it's already applied the skeleton if it hasn't you can just click that drop down and select it but it is so I'm just gonna go ahead and import it and then if I pull her out then yep that looking good alright so now the way we can get this to work is in our shopkeep blueprint let's go into the construction script first thing I want to do is I want to set the mesh that we're going to use so I'm going to type in Skeletal mesh. Crap. That's not the right one. Skeletal mesh. Now the one that you want is... You want to type set skeletal mesh. Maybe that'll make it pop up quicker. It'll be up a little ways and it'll be under a category called skinned... Here it is. Skinned mesh. So it'll be this green one with the parentheses skeletal mesh. We'll hook that right to the construction script. And for the new mesh, I'm just going to drag off and promote that to a variable called mesh. I'm going to click the little eye kajigger just like that. And now from here, we want to override. How do you spell override? Override the animation data. So this little skeletal mesh thing will pop out when you grab this set skeletal mesh. So you just drag off straight from it into the target of your override animation data. And for the animation to play, we're going to drag off and get a select node. Now this is a really cool little feature to let you select different variables based on a wildcard that you can plug in. 
Now for the wild card that we are going to use, I'm going to compile this real quick. You will get an error, but we will fix that in a second. In my NPC folder, I'm going to right click and create an enumeration called my NPC list. I'll open that up and then I'll just add as many slots as I have NPCs. So I've got GM female, GM male, GM for general merchant. I don't know if I said that earlier. Uh, foraging, I'm just going to call her for, you know, I'm just going to call her forager. Forager. Because she's she looks like a hunter, so I figure she's out hunting, gathering stuff, you know. Then I've got my equipment vendor. And then I have my magic teacher. You can call them whatever you like just for you know ease of categorization. But now back in our shopkeep blueprint, we're going to add a variable called NPC type. And it will be our NPC list. So compile that, drag it out, hook it directly to there, and you'll notice that all of those automatically shift. So once you have that shifted, then you can go to each folder where you have your animation. Let's see, I've got that one. Oh, and you'll also notice that your NPCs out here have kind of disappeared. That's because it defaults um, the mesh to empty, but we can set a default in just a second. So I'm going to get my idle animation from my general merchant girl my foraging merchant girl forager and then I'll just show you real quick how this will work so now if I oh, 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 oh one more thing that we need to do is we need to click just like we clicked the little eye on the skeletal mesh we need to do the same thing for the NPC list that way we can access it out here. So with this one selected, I'm going to make this, what was her inventory? She's got, well, I don't care right now. I'm just showing you. So she is my peasant girl. And yeah, she's defaulted to that one. All right. And then for this one, it'll be Arissa. She'll start off T-posing, but once I select Forager, you'll see she's good to go oh let me get rid of these whoa that's probably a bad camera angle but yeah so now each NPC can have its own character model play its own animation etc and all that jazz and it doesn't even take that much to put together so now you can have multiple shops and NPCs as many as you want really you can have a, th a hundred NPCs that all sell one item each and have a hundred different people in your game I mean it's not really not really feasible I suppose but it's doable so that's that's a thing that you could do if you want <laughs> Alright, so in the next one, we'll start setting up the magic teacher so that we can have it customizable to where different ones can have different spells. Like you'll have a restoration teacher and a destruction teacher and, uh, you know, whatever kind of spells you got, you can learn. So, alright. So, I will see y'all soon. Bye-bye.